Justice and obedience to the law. And last week, when Steve announced that we were studying the Old Testament for this quarter, I almost heard moans and groans in the classroom. Uh, but I'd like you to look in your quarterly with me uh, at the page across from page one of our lesson. It's called What's Ahead. And it says about halfway down that, um, that. Here are some biblical principles you will study that can apply to your own life situations. And it lists 13 of them, one for each lesson. And I'd like for us to read those aloud so we can really see what we'll be talking about the next 13 weeks. First one reads, just keep popping up with uh, another one of them after I've read the first one. Obedience, love, and service are God's commands for our good. We are obligated to show loving kindness. A light has come into the world's darkness. God is slow to anger and justice. Maybe we should read them all together. That's right. Let's <laughs> yeah. okay, try it. Justice is being your brother's keeper. Despite our sins, God will not abandon those he loves. Don't simply follow the crowd, but practice justice. Hold those in authority accountable. Provide for the foreigner, the fatherless, and the widow. Challenge injustice when you encounter it. God's word should decide whatever you do. Don't unfairly blame the person suffering. Be humble before God, even when you don't understand his ways. Thank you. That was that was pretty during you all read them. Um, I don't know about you, but I heard many statements there that challenge me to be a better Christian. And I continually find new meaning and familiar scriptures and stories. And I hope that's true for each one of you too. And I hope we find that true this quarter. Our Bible principle for today was obedience, love, and service are God's command for our good. Did you get that? God's command for our good, not for his good, for our good. We think we know what's best for us, don't we? And perhaps someone else, we might have an idea. But it's God who really knows what's best for us. And the first article in your quarterly talks about a young family crossing a busy street. And just on the other side, they could see a beach beckoning them. And the kids were anxious. Each parent held the hand of one child, but wouldn't you know it, one steps off the curb. Right away, dad pulls her back. Well, they did cross safely when the walk sign came on. Signs, rules, laws, commands, they serve an important purpose. They're designed for our protection, for our personal and community good. And that's why we should pay attention to and adhere to God's laws and commands. And what are some signs, my first question, what are some signs, rules, and laws that are signed for our own good and protection? Ten Commandments. Ten Commandments. Stop sign. Stop sign. What trouble if we didn't stop at the stop sign? We've had three accidents on my corner. Yeah, so traffic signals is one, okay. Think some other things. Leash laws. <clears throat> laws that protect us from you know murder and stealing and you know things like that, personal property. Well, why would you not follow good rules and laws? We know that all the time people are not following them. They're careless. They're careless. Look at the Pardon me. Looking at their phones. Looking at their phones. Okay. <laughs> they think they're above the law. Think they're above the law. 
BLY was infringing on their rights, huh? They don't need to be told about it. A lot of times you're not not paying attention. <clears throat> Robin. They could be desperate in some way. Yes. Uh, I know that if I am running late, getting somewhere, I have to really watch my speed because I will drive faster than I should sometimes. Not often, but I've been known to do it. <laughs> Not being held accountable. Okay. Um, it says, why are obedience, love, and service to God the best way for us to live? What happens when we do that? It's a kinder way of life. You may be happier, more at peace, content. It's easier in the long run, okay? Well, God's commands are always for the good for us. Today, our scripture that we're going to study is from Deuteronomy. And we'll start off in Deuteronomy 5. Um, and the first paragraph, if someone would read that, is verses 1 through 3. Here is, here is real the decrees and the laws I declare in your hearing today. Learn them and be sure to follow them. The Lord our God has made a covenant with us at Horeb. It was not with our ancestors that the Lord made this covenant, but with us, with all of us who are alive here today. Thank you, Dave. Uh, Deuteronomy means second law, and that's its emphasis. And one thing I had to check out was the name Horeb. Uh, Horeb and Sinai appear to be used interchangeably for the same mountain or summit. And my commentary suggested that perhaps the lower part was called Horeb and the summit itself Sinai. But the bottom line is both words reference the same place. And in fact, the same giving of the law. Our scripture today has Moses speaking to the people. Uh, Moses also gave the commandments the first time on Mount Sinai, the one I'll use because it's the one I'm most familiar with, I think. About three months after delivering the people from bondage in Egypt, and they were given them to help them prepare to enter the land that God had promised to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Now the land was occupied, and the people were idolaters, and God wanted his people to have guidelines to keep them from idolatrous ways. And sadly, when God brought them to the very brink of entering the land, the people recoiled in fear and refused to enter. And God condemned them to wandering in the wilderness until that faithless generation died off. Only Joshua and Caleb of the 12 that were sent out to spy out the land to see, you know, if they could overcome there. Uh, were the two that said, we can overcome. And the fear of the others made the whole crowd fearful and they decided they weren't going to do it. And we know that they spent 40 years in the wilderness of Moab uh, and uh, before this event we have there in scripture where Moses is again giving the people commandments for a second time to prepare them for entry into that land. And he reminds them that the covenant was made with their generation's ancestors, but it was timeless. And all succeeding generations, including us today, and any of those that follow, and all in between, were included in this covenant. And then if someone read that second paragraph of scripture verses, and this is in chapter 10, verses 12 and 13. And now, Israel, what does the Lord your God ask of you but to fear the Lord your God, to walk in obedience to him, to love him, to serve the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, and to observe the Lord's commands and decrees that I am giving you today for you for your own good. Thank you, Anne. Uh, here Moses asks the people a question about what God requires of them, and then he answers it himself with five familiar phrases to us. Uh, the people are urged to fear 
the Lord God, to walk in all his ways, to love him, serve him, observe his commands and decrees. And all of this was designed for their own good. And the questions here were, what, way, what were God's people to do with his laws and decrees? To learn them and follow them. To learn them and follow them. And with whom did God make his covenant? All of us who are here today. All people at all times, didn't we? Included the people of that day, clear up into the day and the tomorrows we have. Uh, and what does God ask of his people? To keep his commandments and to love and serve him. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Then let's read uh, Deuteronomy 27, verses 1 through 5, if someone will read that for us. Moses and the elders of Israel commanded the people, keep all these commands that I give you today. When you have crossed the Jordan into the land the Lord your God is giving you, set up some large stones and coat them with plaster. <laughs> Write in them all the words of this law when you have crossed over to enter the land the Lord your God is giving you, a land flowing with milk and honey, just as the Lord the God of your ancestors promised you. And when you have crossed the Jordan, set up these stones on Mount Ebal, as I command you today, and coat them with plaster. Build there an altar to the Lord your God, an altar of stones. Do not use any iron tool on them. Thank you. Uh, I, I, in this scripture, according to verse one, it's not Moses alone now. It's Moses and the elders of Israel that are speaking, mm -hmm. commanding the people. And, and this may be in part because um, Moses is, you know, he, he is facing imminent death. So we know that Moses does not enter the promised land. Um, and it says there, keep all these commands I give you today. And the Hebrew word for keep means to observe, protect, um, observe, protect, and preserve. Let me try one more time. Observe, preserve, and protect. It speaks of the night watchman who stands alert and uh, is watchful for the first sign of attack or danger. And this is the picture of keeping God's commands that Moses gave that they need to be ready and alert. He was preparing them for the land that God had promised them. But in this land of abundance, spiritual danger awaited because those people worshiped idols. And to protect them, they were to hold fast to all that God had told them. And after crossing the Jordan, they were together uncut stone. And it says, do not use any iron tool on them. And uh, I'm sure don't understand why exactly, but, you know, just a stone that was lying there. And to build that altar, to coat it with plaster and write God's commands on it. So they would remember they were God's people. I wondered, I thought, well, they built a stone altar and they <coughs> plaster it. You know, it seemed kind of strange <coughs> to me. I, I thought they were putting stones together, but no, they're plastering it. And then I thought, ah. Rather than etch and rock, it would be easier to write stones in soft plaster. I mean, words in soft plaster. And that may not be the answer, but that's what my people might thought, perhaps. Question seven here asks, uh, what were God's people to build after crossing the Jordan River? Mm -hmm. An altar. And what would they to write in the plaster and why? The laws. The laws. So, so they don't forget. Mm -hmm. So they don't forget. So they remember whose they were. And, um, and that's why it's so important for us today to be in our scriptures, study our scriptures, know our scriptures, so we remember who we are. How do God's people remember his truths today? I think I almost answered that. I'm sorry. <laughs> By Bible reading, mm -hmm. you know, scripture, memorizing verses. I don't know if you know, but Sue Ann probably knows half the Bible. But memory, she knows just scripture after scripture after scripture she can recite. Kelly does too. Yeah, she probably does. You're right. 
Okay. And from Deuteronomy 27, we have verses 1, I don't know, to 5 to 10 now, aren't we? Okay. 5 through 10. Build the altar of the Lord your God with hill stones and offer burnt offerings on it to the Lord your God. Sacrifice fellowship offerings there, eating them and rejoicing in the presence of the Lord your God. And you shall write very clearly all the words of this law on the stones that you have set up. Then Moses and the Levitical priests said to all Israel, be silent, Israel, and listen. You have now become the people of the Lord, your God. Obey the Lord, your God, and follow his commands and decrees that I give you today. Thank you. Mary Jo, appreciate that. Among other things, the Old Testament uh, sacrifices and offerings, including the peace offering, uh, foreshadowed the ultimate sacrifice our Lord made on the cross. This next statement kind of stopped, stopped me in my tracks. It says, there was a time when we were enemies of God. Isn't that kind of? Mm -hmm. And then I thought of the scripture that says, um, you know, uh, don't be hot or cold. I'll spit you out of my mouth. Mm -hmm. And there's really no sitting on the fence with God. You're either for him or you're mm -hmm. against him. So I can see why they would have expressed it. We were, there was a time when we were enemies of God, but he made peace with us, reconciled us to him by the death of his son as a sacrifice for us. Well, in addition to the stone to be set up on Mount Ebal for displaying the law, an altar of field stones was to be erected. And this was a, a temporary special occasion use and um, it was very similar, similar to what the patriarchs used to build. And burnt offerings and fellowship offerings were sacrificed there. And the people would eat the fellowship offering uh, while rejoicing in the presence of the Lord. And just as the people were instructed at the giving of the law at Sinai, so now at the renewal of the covenant, burnt offerings and fellowship offerings were to be made. The authority of the elders and Moses began this series of directions, but the priests had their voice here, and uh, they declare the people of God. Um, they declare that they are now the people of God, and basically there were three declarations of this. First at Sinai, or Horeb, on the plains of Moab, you know, in the wilderness, and again, when they're actually crossing the Jordan 40 years later. And in every instance, the formula is present. The relationship established between the Lord and Israel. Not only is the Lord the creator of the people as human beings, he's also the creator of Israel as a political entity. That was another statement that kind of made me think. Yeah, these people had no home country. Abraham left Ur, and they had wandered ever since. Uh, and most people are identified by the country in which they live, are born. And here we have, he's the creator of Israel as a political entity. I thought it was interesting. Question 10 asks, along with writing God's commandments on this altar of stones, what else were the people on it to do, to do on it? <laughs> Pardon me? <laughs> Live by the commandments, okay. Mm -hmm. The altar there was also make sacrifices. Make offerings, sacrifices, okay. And they were to eat those sacrifices and fellowship offerings. Mm -hmm. There were some offerings, I believe it was the first fruits offerings, that they were not to eat. But this was one, the fellowship offering, the peace offering was one that they could and were expected to. What admonishment did Moses give again to the people at the end of this passage? To obey the Lord's commandments. Yeah. And follow them. Yeah. How can we lovingly obey and serve the Lord today? 
think so right now by joining together. Okay. Good morning. Yeah. I heard someone behind me. Thank you, Alan. Alan. Okay. Thank you, Alan. Okay. I think you all are doing things today, serving God. I see you doing things. And uh, I'm surprised you didn't come out with some of those things. We know that Steve is a busy, busy man. Joyce is busy with the elderly in the church, which we are of. <laughs> not pointing my finger here. <laughs> and, uh, uh, I just, Dave Burton, how faithful he is. Everybody is. I know Gail does nice things for people. There's just so many of you that I, I hesitate to name names because I know I see you as greeters. I see you. I see you as elders. You're working, and God loves that. He appreciates you. Um, the last section in a court list is called judgment, uh, justice, judgment, and obedience. Uh, the order of that kind of bothered me. I, I would think of it backwards from that, but anyway. And our court list uses my Try all time favorite scripture from Micah 6 8. What does the Lord require of you but to ask justly? Love mercy, walk humbly with your God. And I, I just think that says it all. That's what he asks of us. And our world is in great need of the Christians to shine their light. We know that evil is rampant, innocent blood is shed most every day uh, here in Kansas City. We on the evening news, almost every day there's murders. And people practice idolatry by worshiping money, power, pleasure, anything they put first before God. And the suggestion that immorality seems to be the new standard. And we could go on and on. The world is not what we'd like it to be. And the bottom line is the world needs us as Christians to shine out of the darkness of this world. And it's only by being faithful in the grace of God and continually seeking God that we will resist the world and our sinful impulses. We must be serving God in obedience if we are to point people to a saving knowledge of our Lord. And we must study to show ourselves approved and other scripture says, so we are equipped to minister. And the question here, how can we keep God's commands each day? By our actions and what we do, and he tells us. Obeying his word. Obeying his word. All I could think of was with God's help. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's through his strength and, <laughs> that we are able to do. And it asks, in what ways are justice, judgment, and obedience connected? That was a hard one for me. But when I turn them in the opposite order and put obedience first, and then judgment, and then justice, I could kind of see a pattern that God asks our obedience. He warns us of judgment. And he applies justice. And I could see a pattern there. I don't know what they're looking for. Does anyone have a different idea? I, I have the same idea as you. <laughs> Sounds good. Well, how do we demonstrate we're ready to serve the Lord? Live by the laws. Live by the laws. God is perfect. Law is perfect. God is holy. Law is holy. God is spirit. Law is spiritual. God is love. Law is, law is love. God is light. Law is light. God is true. Law is true. God is righteous. Law is righteous. God is righteous. Law is righteous. God is just. God, law, the law is just. God is pure. Law is pure. God is good. Law is good. God is faithful. Law, law is faithful. 
God is wisdom. Law is wisdom. God is great. Law is great. God is God is the God of peace. Love of the law brings peace. Law is unchanging. Law is unchanging. Beautiful. Thank you. Mm -hmm. When we put our, when we put all our heart into it, we walk in that path. Because we get off that line, we know we know we had got off that uh, 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 going crooked. But when we put all, we're comfortable when we put all our heart into it. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Um, did, did I ask how do we demonstrate we're ready to serve the Lord? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Okay. By responding to the opportunities that come our way, for sure. And being ready, being observant, being open. Well, we demonstrate our love of God by the love we show one another. And love is seen in what we say, what we do. Are we caring for others? Are our words kind? We keep God's commands not because we hope to earn salvation, but because it shows we love him and we want to serve him. And I'll just close in prayer unless someone has a comment. Well, on that very last paragraph, yes. we must not promise what we have no intention of doing. And my granddad always used to say, I can learn to do this. He uh -huh. said, little small child, your word is your bond. Yes. In other words, if you say you're going to do, do it, it, do it. Do it. you're going to do it. And yeah. there would be no question about that. Yeah. And if we can live by that today, we would be much better off if we could. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, let's go to our Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we just ask you for continued grace that you pour upon us and peace and protection and direction for our daily walk. Lord, we need you in so many ways. And we desire daily to seek you in prayer and study of your word, that we may know you and obey your voice. Help us to truly nourish and maintain an intimate relationship with you so that you know our voice when we pray. Father, we thank you for hearing our prayers. We are each one confident that they are heard. And Father, today we lift those we've spoken of. Father, we're so grateful for Kate, Caitlin's uh, good news after her surgery, her healing, for Heather Monaco's coming through her surgery fine, for Clint Wigfall coming through his, and Lord, we're watchful of the cancer they have found and uh, the upcoming appointment to decide when they will do surgery for that, Lord. We just lift them to you for your grace. Father, we think of uh, Marianne Mallott, who is in rehab right now, Lord, and we just ask that you keep her spirits up and help her to progress well. We think of our friends, uh, Joyce Cottrell and Phyllis Gregory in Care Center, Lord, and we just lift them to you and help them to know that they are remembered by this congregation, that we love them, and we pray for them. And Father, we thank our Curtis, who's uh, facing surgery on the 22nd, Lord, for her knee replacement. We just ask that um, he'll ease her worries and let her place her trust in you, that you will be with her every step of the way. Yes, Lord. And Father, we just uh, lift to you, Wayne, as that he gets the diagnosis of a blood artery, Lord, that can't be fixed by surgery and we just pray that the doctors will be able to figure out what needs to be done to make his life better and father we lift to you robin's brother larry johnson uh, lord he's having continuing health issues and um, i don't know what the problem is but you do and you know the answer lord we just ask that you hold very close and that uh, healing will begin Father, we hear that Sandy Fatig is continuing with fatigue from her bout with COVID, Lord, and just not up to snuff. Lord, we just pray that um, you will give her strength 
restore that strength so she's able to go about her life in the way she would like to. And Father, what great news that David finally resolved the insurance situation, Lord. We know that you answer prayer and we, we can't praise you enough for that. You're an awesome God. You continually have our good as your goal for us. And all that we encounter, we know when we come to the end, you are there to meet us. Father, praise you. We love you. We adore you. We're thankful that we had such a father who would give a son so that our sins might be forgiven and we could look forward to an eternity spent with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. That was great news, David. I'm glad that was said. I forgot to mention Sandy Wiley's birthday is uh, tomorrow. So happy birthday, Sandy. Happy birthday. So Sandy and Artis on the same day. All right. We're twins. Merry Christmas. Bye. 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 Bye.